And let me start by saying that the world is experiencing a very complex geopolitical situation with compound shocks driven by the far-reaching impacts of COVID, conflicts, and climate. Africa is on the front line of this as one of the world's most vulnerable regions and among the most threatened by the impact of climate change, according to IPCC six assessment reports. While many sub-regions are at risk of approaching habitability limits, a compound crisis is already manifesting through the acute food shortages driven by escalating fuel costs and supply shortages. Across Africa, more than 280 million people are food insecure and the number is rising. Warmer temperatures are already transforming the planet, causing more extreme storms, floods, and droughts, heat waves, rising sea levels, and sadly, a significant human casualty. Not only must we act because Africa is on the front line, but also we need to preserve Africa's ecosystems, which provide free, crucial services to the world. African forests and oceans serve as natural carbon sinks to the entire world. Therefore, adaptation must be accelerated at the same time as a transition away from fossil fuels is being accelerated. However, global finance is largely skewed towards mitigation, with only 7.2% going to adaptation. Adaptation is urgent, and it is crucial to building broader societal and economic resilience. While Africa contributed the least to this climate emergency, climate-related extremes are putting years of growth and development progress in Africa at risk. African countries are unable to face this burden alone and already suffering from limited fiscal maneuverability after the COVID-19 pandemic and the impacts of the war in Ukraine, all devastating phenomena that the African continent did not create. Finance is key to the success of adaptation strategies in Africa, but current adaptation finance flows are insufficient to meet Africa's growing adaptation needs. The continent needs roughly about 33 billion a year in adaptation finance, but only about 6 billion comes in every year. This is grossly insignificant. However, there are silver linings in the sky. For instance, COP26 represented a breakthrough moment for adaptation with the pledge of doubling global climate adaptation finance by 2025. But the annual 100 billion climate finance target and the balance between adaptation and mitigation have still not been achieved. That ambition must now be turned into action with finance, particularly for adaptation, flowing through the regions that need it most, especially Africa. Overseas development assistance plays a critical role in filling adaptation finance gaps in Africa. Public money can help to de-risk adaptation activities and support more commercial finance. It is very important, therefore, that we shift the perception of adaptation and resilience as just being global public goods and instead start to acknowledge them as smart investments. Evidence shows that early adaptation has high benefits to cost ratios. For example, investments in weather and climate information services in Africa have shown a benefit to cost ratio ranging between four to one and 25 to one, depending on the region. These are some of the findings of the Global Center on Adaptation's flagship reports published in 2021, just last year. Therefore, Adaptation is not only urgently needed, it makes economic sense. Investments in adaptation can avoid disaster-related losses, spur economic gains, and deliver environmental benefits. Solutions to bridge the adaptation finance gap exist. For example, the Global Center on Adaptation is already working with the public and private sectors to broker mutually beneficial investments in the climate agenda. Also, it is important that the private sector and financial institutions mainstream resilience into investments that they are making. 
It is in this context that the Africa Adaptation Acceleration Program stands out as a continent-wide investment plan at scale for adaptation in Africa. Jointly developed by the African Development Bank and the Global Center on Adaptation, the Africa Adaptation Acceleration Program is the Africa-led vehicle to mobilize $25 billion in five years for adaptation in the areas of food security, resilient infrastructure, climate finance, and youth employment. Owned and led by Africa as the actualization of Africa Adaptation Initiative, the Africa Adaptation Acceleration Program in itself is an innovative tool and a robust investment plan to drive adaptation finance in Africa. This initiative is supported by the Africa Adaptation Acceleration Program Upstream Financing Facility, which finances upstream work such as climate vulnerability assessments and the design of adaptation solutions to mainstream adaptation and resilience components into large investment projects of financial institutions. To date, every dollar invested in the Africa Adaptation Acceleration Program upstream facility has leveraged on average $100 in downstream adaptation investments, an impressive ratio of one to 100. The downstream financing facility that will mobilize the billions will be hosted by the African Development Bank through the climate action window of its 16th African Development Funds replenishment. What we need to bridge the adaptation finance gap are smart and innovative partnerships between public and private sectors to close the information and knowledge gaps for governments, businesses, and civil society groups to begin making climate-informed choices. To ensure adaptation finance flows and commitments are fulfilled, political mobilization is absolutely essential. The Africa Adaptation Acceleration Program was endorsed by the largest ever gathering of African heads of states and government focused on adaptation in the year 2021, just last year. Since then, the key partners of the Africa Adaptation Acceleration Program have continued this political mobilization also by creating action forcing moments to push forward the delivery of adaptation finance commitments, such as the recent adaptation summit hosted by the Global Center on Adaptation in Rotterdam on 5th of September this year, just less than a month ago. Therefore, as we head into COP27, another African COP, it is essential to build on this momentum for adaptation. Mitigation and adaptation are not an either or scenario. They must go hand in hand towards saving lives and building climate resilient livelihoods. After all, we all know that prevention is better than cure. My call for global leaders at COP27 is that despite the multiple and overlapping challenges that the world is facing, this is not the time to neglect climate action or to take money away from climate finance. In Sharm El Sheikh, we need to significantly scale our ambition on adaptation finance, and we need to get the money flowing in line with this ambition. I know we can do it. I thank you all. <music>